Okay, uh, good morning everyone. Uh, welcome to a new week. Uh, let's begin this time with a word of prayer. Uh, maybe one of us can lead us. Avinas, would it be okay for you to lead us in prayer? Uh, yes, Pastor Sio. Pastor, am I audible? Yes, yes, you are. Yeah, thank you. So let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful time. We thank you for this beautiful morning, Lord Jesus. We come into your throne, Father God, and we praise you. We, we honor you. We lift our hands, our heart, and to give you praise and glory. This time, Father God, we submit all the students and the pastors to your mighty hand, Jesus. As we are going through this session, Father God, we ask you the more of your revelation, more of your understanding, Father God, more of your wisdom to dig in your word, Father God, and help us to learn the word, Lord Jesus, from your from your life, Lord Jesus, from you, Lord Jesus. We give you all the glory and honor to you, Father God. We submit this time to your mighty hand, and we ask this prayer in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Evidence. All right. So uh, this morning we come to our last section in this study. Uh, you know, I, I know that we've been covering a lot of content uh, from the beginning of this uh, course. Uh, but we come to section three, which is the workplace and you. So we are in chapter 18. Uh, if you're tracking along on your notes, chapter 18, we have a couple of more chapters and we should be able to complete it in another two or three more uh, sessions. So let's get into chapter 18, career growth. Right now, professionally, we all will want to grow in life, right? Uh, even, even if you look at ministry, none of us want to keep doing the same thing, like, you know, say for example, you just joined the ministry as a small group leader, or, or, or you know, you're, you're in, a, in a position that is just a beginner's role. Even ministry, it is very important that we desire to grow professionally. Right? And of course, in the workplace, we all desire, right? Career growth is something that we all need. Um, and, and, and so career growth is also dependent on career development, meaning the, the, our gifts, our grace, our callings, our abilities needs to also develop, right? Now, for example, if I say I want to grow in my career, but I don't do anything about it, right? Uh, and I'm just, you know, doing... The normal regular things that i'm doing then what happens is it just becomes wishful thinking meaning okay hey i want to be this but uh, i'm not doing anything about it right so for example let's look at it in a ministry way right so example some uh, you know god has called one of us to be a pastor right now you're just volunteering in the sound and setup team right and god has called you to be a pastor uh, and we know that one day you're going to plant a church and you're going to lead people in the ministry. Now, what must we do? We know that it's, you know, okay, volunteering an audio team and, and you know that the responsibilities are higher as a pastor. So what must we do? Of course, it's, 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 we know that we have to spend time in God's word. We have to pray, we have to really dig into God's word because we have to prepare sermons. We have to be able to minister to people. We have to begin to flow the gifts of the Spirit. There's so much that we need to do. We need to study and that goes on happening. So, so the same way uh, in career growth, whatever it is, ministry, workplace, um, if we want to grow, we must also develop ourselves in our gifts, in, in, in our abilities, in, our, uh, in whatever resources we have, we must develop ourselves. So in this chapter, we look at insights relating to career growth uh, and what does the Bible teach us on principles of uh, career growth, right? Uh, so let's look at that, chapter 18, the first point. Um, you can enjoy the rewards of your work. Let's read Psalms 128, 1 to 4. Psalms 128, verses 1 to 4. Yes, could any one of us please read? Psalms 128, 1 to 4. Psalm 128, verse 1 to 4. Happy are those who obey the Lord, who live by his commandment. Your work will be provide 
with your need, you will be happy and prosperous. Your wife will be like a fruitful vine in your home. Your children will be like young olive trees around your table. A man who obeys the Lord will surely be blessed like this. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone. So the Bible teaches us that and promises us in the scriptures that whenever we work hard, whenever we you know put our hearts to the responsibilities and the work that God has given us, we can enjoy the fruit or the rewards of our work. Right? Now, some of us may be, you know, uh, maybe just you know, housewives at home, it's all right because uh, when we are putting our efforts in raising up our children, we will enjoy the rewards of our work. And I'm reminded of this family uh, who come to our church uh, and they have two young boys. They should be about 12, 10 and 12 years old. Those two boys are so mature in Christ they're so mature and really talk, they're so well mannered, you know, in a day and age that we see, you know, children are so rough and you know they talk back to their parents. But these two boys are so mature in Christ. Right? And they're so well mannered. They, they you know they say their thank yous, welcome. And uh, you know, they they uh, I remember, you know, whenever we preach on Sunday, they make notes, they have their own Bible, they make notes. They have their own Bible study time. So I went up to their parents and I said, uh, how did you raise up your children? Uh, you know, what did you do to them? You know, they're so well mannered, they're so uh, you know, fervent for the Lord at such a young, such a young age. What did you do? And the mother said this, Oh Pastor, I spent hours and hours and hours sitting with them and teaching them. We would wake up in the morning. The first thing I would do is I would tell them, this is what you must do. You should sit, you should pray. And she would teach them how to pray. And then she would also play these, you know, before getting them ready to school, uh, she would play these, uh, you know, five minute uh, cartoon devotionals. This was from the time they were five years old. Uh, cartoon uh, devotionals where they would watch it. And then the first thing that goes into their mind is the scriptures. Right, so the whole day they're there, they school, they finish school, they come back again. They the mother sits with them and asks them what are the things that happened in school. And after that, they, they have a small Bible study time, they spend time in singing songs. And she's just a housewife, right? She, she it, that's her life, that's what she's going to do. But one of the things that I realized is she is enjoying the, the fruit of her heart. And her children are so wonderful. And I told, I keep telling her, you know, Adi, you, you, what you have done from the time you're six years old, from the child who was six years old to now, we can see it in their life. And so Bible promises us, the scriptures promise us that when we work hard, when we give toil and we, and we work on an honorable way, we can enjoy the fruit, the rewards of our work, right? Uh, especially when it comes to the workplace, uh, you know, professionally, uh, it means developing our skills, developing our knowledge, our expertise. Uh, and, and, and that's how we can, you know, have career growth in our life. And when we do grow in our careers, God expects us to enjoy the rewards of our work, right? So we could even be parents who are looking after children, uh, the more effort we put uh, on our children, the more we will see, you know, they, they are working, walking in the ways of the Lord, right? Uh, uh, second point, promotion comes from the Lord. We did touch upon this topic, but let's read Psalms 75, 6 to 7. Psalms 75, 6 to 7. Right, I'll just read that. For exaltation comes neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. But God is the judge. He puts down one and exalts another. Again, Psalm 1 Peter verse 5 and chapter 5, verse 6. Humble yourselves then under God's mighty hand, so that he will lift you up in his good time. 
right? Now, this is very important to understand that promotion comes from the Lord. It is the Lord who will open the right doors. It is the Lord who will recognize, uh, you know, our hard work and our, uh, you know, our faithfulness, in both in the workplace and ministry. It is the Lord who opens up the doors for us. Now, what we must do, we must be yielded to what God is doing in our lives. Now, just because we say, okay, uh, the wrong thing to do is to say, okay, God is the one who brings promotion to my life, right? Promotion comes from the Lord. So I will sit and I will pray and pray and worship God and do all of this fasting, prayer and everything um, and wait on the Lord, right? Uh, for a promotion. Now that's not how it works, right? We know that uh, faith and works go together. Right? You have faith that, okay, God is going to give me the promotion, but I also need to work hard for Right. Uh, uh, but now the wrong understanding would be, and I've given you plenty of examples as well, where, you know, we can say, you know, God is going to give me promotion, but then we don't work hard for it. And we just sit and wait, it out, right? So waiting time is not, uh, you know, idle time. It's preparing, right? And we'll, and we'll see that later on as well. So let be assured of this. Maybe people in your office or people in the ministry have not recognized uh, your your hard work, or if you know you know you work really hard on a certain project, or even in the ministry, work really hard and really believe that you know you're going to get a promotion, but for some reason it does not come your way. Um, do not lose hope. Do not lose faith in God. Continue to trust God. It's very hard. Uh, we do understand, but when you continue to trust God and say, God, I know the promotion comes from. And you will open the right door. And as his children, we can always trust in him. Right? Um, you know, I'm sure we've heard of this. Now. I thank God. Many of them have said this to me. I thank God, Pastor. I didn't take this project because you know, I was really waiting for this. But uh, I thank God later on. I didn't take this project because I got something better a few months later or a year later. I got something much better than this. Right? And so remember that. When promotion comes, it comes from the Lord, and He knows how to give it, when to give it, and and, and, uh, and through what opportunity to give it. So we continue to trust God, right? Uh, the next point is excellence will be rewarded, right? Now the Bible teaches a lot about excellence. Uh, you know, Daniel had the spirit of excellence. Everything that Daniel did was excellent. Remember that verse? The, the, the king's uh, you know, the, the helpers, they were looking for a way to find some fault in Daniel, but they could not find a fault. Right? Because he had an excellent spirit. Everything that Daniel did, he did it with excellence. There was no holes in any work that he had done. So, but they, they only knew that, okay, we'll get this man, Daniel, out of this position or to, you know, in a way to condemn him is only through his God. There's no other way because in his work, he's perfect. Everything he's done well. Now picture this. They're in Babylon. They're in captivity. But God used Daniel in such a way that he served under three kings. Three kings he served under. And the first king wanted Daniel, we know that Daniel chapter 1 and 2, he, he interprets the dreams. And the second king comes, uh, you know, he interprets the writing on the wall. And then the third king, Darius, uh, the Persian king comes and he says, I want Daniel to continue to do the administration uh, at Babylon. So, we see that Daniel was a man of excellence. Let's see what Proverbs chapter 23 and was, sorry, Proverbs 22 and 29 says. Yes, could one of us please read this? Proverbs 22 and verse 29. I'll read it. Yes, please go ahead. Be 
you see a man who excels in his work? He will stand before kings. He will not stand before unknown men. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Excellence is doing an exceptional job uh, in everything that has been assigned to you. Right? Now, as believers, you and I must always strive for excellence. We must never come to a place of saying of, of average work. Right? Uh, it should never be like, okay, I'm happy that I uh, that this is okay, you know, this, this is average, it's all right. No. We must strive for excellence because God has put in us the spirit of excellence. We must strive for it. We must say, God, help me to be the best in what I'm doing. Right? Uh, even in ministry, if we are uh, studying and preaching, we are uh, even handling a church, strive for excellence. You know, we may be just 20, 30 people in the church. We strive for excellence. We say, God, even though we're just 20, 30 people, we want to strive for excellence. You know, the way we uh, lead our people, uh, lead the worship team, we may not have very good musicians, but we strive to get better as a worship team. We strive to get better as a preacher or as a pastor. You continue to develop your skills, right? Now, one of the things that as pastors we forget is we focus on the word, which is number one priority, but we also forget that we must also learn, like for example, if it's English, uh, you have to develop your English vocabulary, your, you know, the sentence construction, your words, uh, the way we teach, the way we minister to people. There are so many uh, things that we can learn, right? Uh, so as pastors, it doesn't come to an end or ministry leaders, you may be uh, leading a small group in a house, say, okay, this is what God has called me for. Yes, but strive for excellence in a way that you say, okay, I want to develop myself in such a way that whoever comes here, uh, with whatever problem they have, that the Lord will give me the wisdom to handle those situations, handle these people. What will happen? What, what if people come to you and say, uh, I want a divorce? What are you going to say? Right? How what scriptures are going to use, um, and how are you going to minister to them? Or what if uh, a, a family uh, comes and says, "My son, who's seventeen years old, wants to commit suicide. Um, how do I minister to them?" You know, these are all things that we must learn, right? And we can develop ourselves. It's not only you know, uh, it's not only about preaching on Sundays or preaching on Bible study groups, but uh, the spirit of excellence that we carry, we can develop and grow in ourselves, right? There's also this, you know, many, many times people who've lost their loved ones, they're going through bereavement. And especially at times when they, it is a Christian family. You know, we had a family here in Bangalore who are good believers, wonderful believers, right? They've been serving in the church continually. Uh, but all of a sudden, uh, this... Uh, elderly couple, they had two, two sons, and the younger son, who was about maybe 15 years old, all of a sudden committed suicide. And they had so many questions in their mind. Why did this happen? Why did he take such a drastic step? Where did we go wrong? Right? And they will come up to us and ask us, what did we do? Well, where did we go wrong? Why did the Lord allow this to happen? You know, the spirit of excellence is, is being able to also, yeah, right? We have the spirit of wisdom also to give the right um, uh, answers and to, you know, to, uh, to know how to minister to these people. people. Uh, the spirit of excellence also is something that we must stand for, right? And we say, God, we thank you. Uh, for all that you've done, and I know that you're going to, you know, bless the ministry. Sometimes, you know, when the church is small or the ministry is small, we think, okay, it's all right, let it happen, how it's happening. Let's see, when it grows big, we can do this. And I myself have sometimes felt that way, but I thank God that God brought it to my attention. Even though we're small, we need to be 
good in what we do. We need to be excellent in what we do. So as believers, strive for excellence in your studies, in the workplace, in worship, in preaching, in teaching, strive for excellence. Right? If you if you're a, a you know a housewife, strive for excellence in raising up your children. Right? Each one of us can strive for that. Right. Let's go to the next point. Wisdom opens doors. And I love this word because wisdom is something, you know, we can have a lot of knowledge about many things uh, that are happening around us. But wisdom is the right use of knowledge, right? Or applying knowledge in the right way. Let's read uh, Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 8. Proverbs chapter 12. Verse 8. Yes, any one of us can read that. Proverbs 12 and verse 8. <laughs> All right. A man will be commended according to his wisdom, but he who is of a perverse heart will be despised. Yes, thank you, Henry. So we all know what wisdom is, right? Wisdom is the ability not only, you know, it's not only about gaining knowledge, it's not only about understanding, but putting that skill into, uh, into use where we solve problems, we create opportunities, we envision, we innovate, we come up with ideas, and that is what wisdom is, right? When we look at uh, so many of them from the Bible, when we look at, you know, we studied about Nehemiah, right? God gave him the vision and then he was able to use the wisdom that God gave him to come up with strategies to fulfill uh, the, the purpose that he had in his life. Look at Daniel, look at, look at David, look at Joseph. All of these men walked in such wonderful wisdom. Right? And wisdom is not just gaining knowledge. It's the ability to make the right decisions, to solve problems in the right way, uh, and, and to, uh, you know, to envision things in the future. You know, another important aspect of wisdom is, uh, is even the point of looking after children. You know, we need wisdom. We've come to a time when you know, children ask us such wonderful questions and really don't know what to say times. You know, I have a six-year-old boy and he was asking me, why is there the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit? Why can't they just be one? And I said, okay, there's something called this you know, Trinity, the Father has, does this. Son. And he said, but how did the Son and the Father be together? And then how did they come into this world? And so they have some deep questions. right? And uh, you and I need the wisdom of God, uh, not only in the workplace, but even at home. Uh, I love what uh, in the book of Proverbs, it says, wisdom is like pearls around your neck. A lot of times, uh, leaders, they have wonderful, great knowledge, great understanding. You know, they, they, they're so learned, but they fall because they didn't walk in wisdom. Right? Uh, even in ministry, when you look at people, they may have gone up the ladder, you know, become very famous in, in, in ministry, many people calling them, uh, doing very well. Uh, but they've fallen in small things. Why? Because they didn't act in wisdom. So we must remember that in our, in our gifts and talents, all that is good. But when we, we use it the right way, wisdom will open the right doors in front of us. God, God's people will recognize wisdom. Always remember this. Right? Gifts and callings are very easily, easily recognizable. Right? If you're a worship leader, they'll know okay, he's gifted as a worship leader or he's gifted as a preacher or he's gifted as a teacher. So you can, you can recognize it. Right? But wisdom is something that is you know, it, it is God who will, who will open the right doors. At the right time, 
in the right way, God will open doors. Now the mistake we do is sometimes, um, you know, we've been praying for something and then if somebody else gets an opportunity, uh, and that's, you believe that that's your opportunity, uh, we get angry. We say, hey, that is mine. I should have got that. How can he get it? Or how can she get this? And we react in a negative way. Wisdom is knowing that, you know, God is in control of everything and understanding that, okay, this is not how I must react. Uh, I need to know how to walk. I need to know that, okay, God, I'm, I'm God's child. I should, uh, I should walk in an honorable and integral way. And God will open the right doors. Will open the right doors. Now, this reminding of this, there's this young boy in our church, um, right? And he always keeps serving in the church, very faithful in church, right? But he hardly speaks, even to me. He hardly speaks. He's very soft. He doesn't talk much. Hardly speaks. And that's his nature, right? He, he, but he's there for anything in the church to serve. He's there. Uh, but you, he doesn't really talk much. Uh, and a couple of meetings, the first few times I met him, immediately I knew that this boy is a boy probably about 21, 22 years old. And I realized that this boy at such a young age has so much of wisdom. I just knew it. Right? And I told him, that, you know, God has given you this wonderful wisdom. Use it to grow up in your work, right? He's working, he's studying as an aeronautical engineer. And, uh, uh, you know, he just graduated. And right now, he's in Dubai, and he got a good job in Dubai, and in a good airline, you know, aeronautical engineer thing. And he just, you know, emailed or he messaged me, and he said, I got a job which people who are five or seven to eight years experienced, only they would get, but I've got that job. The responsibilities are high now. He was so glad and I told him, this is because the wisdom of God is upon me. And God has opened that door for me. We know that, you know, aeronautical engineering is a niche market, which means it's not many openings. It's not very easy to get it. But God opened the door for me. Remember, the wisdom of God will open many doors. But sometimes our foolishness can close those doors. So we must walk with wisdom. Right? Uh, let's go to the next point. A sincere heart and gracious lips will get you noticed. Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 11. Let's read that. Proverbs 22 and 11. Proverbs 22 and verse 11. Proverbs 22, verse 11. He who loves purity of heart and has grace on his lips, the king will be his friend. Amen. He who loves purity of heart, a sincere heart, will have an, uh, and has grace on his lips, the king will be his friend. Uh, a sincere heart and gracious lips will get unnoticed, will get noticed. Now we may have a lot of, you know, professionally, we may have a lot of knowledge, but what if we are, you know, what if we met a lot of people who are professionally very knowledgeable, but when they speak, they are so rude and arrogant and Say, you know, they act like they know everything and they demean and put down other people. Uh, do you think you'd want to work with a boss like that? A person who's always rude and shouting and arrogant? No, you wouldn't want to. You would be dreading to go to office. Uh, but the Bible says that a sincere heart and gracious lips will not go unnoticed. God will make sure that those of us who work with a sincere heart, God will notice. He will put it into people's heart. People will notice and see that, hey, this guy or this person 
will do a good job in this position, right? Uh, he's a sincere worker. One thing we know that whatever he does, he works sincerely. Now, false allegations may be put upon us, but when we are people who with sincere heart, with gracious lips, the Lord will stand for us. You know, remember that the enemy may bring accusations against us. But when we walk in these two attributes, these are godly attributes, sincere heart, being true to God, being true to the people that you work with, and gracious lips, knowing what to speak, how to speak, in loving kindness and in humility, in an in, 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 with integrity, all of these things will not go unnoticed. People will watch. You know, it's better to have uh, a sincere heart and gracious lips than to have a lot of knowledge and understanding and, and you know, be a rude person. Next point, the more you are given, the more you have to deliver. Let's read Luke chapter 12, verse 48. Luke 12 and verse 48. Let's read, any one of us. Luke chapter Luke 12. Luke 12, verse uh, 12, uh, 12, 48. But the servant who does not know what his master wants, and yet does something for which he deserves a whipping, will be punished with a light whipping. Much is required for the person to whom much is given. Much more is required for the person to whom much more is given. Thank you. Thank you, Christopher. Now, we know this, right? It's the more you are given, the more we have to deliver. Now, as we go up the ladder, right, the more responsibilities, the more we have to deliver. Now, if we want to grow in our work or in, our, in the ministry, and if we're not doing, we looked at it at the first point, if we're not doing anything about it, then it's just wishful thinking. We're just thinking, oh, I wish I could be a pastor, I wish I could be a preacher or a... I wish I could be a worship leader. And we are, if we are not doing anything about it, then it's just wishful thinking, right? So the same way, the more that is given to you, the more opportunities that come your way, the more you have to deliver, right? Now, for example, you may be a small group leader. So you know, okay, there are 10 people in your small group. You need to nurture them, you know, uh, empower them, be there for them, you know, counsel them. Uh, you're like a pastor to them, to those 10 people. Now, all of a sudden, there is an opportunity and they say, okay, you, you're a small group leader. You've been here for five years. Now, there's a church. You'll have to pastor the church. Now, you know, okay, the position is a little bit higher and we have to deliver. The more that is given, Oh, uh, we have to deliver. We know, okay, I can't do the same things what I was doing when I was a small group leader. I need to spend more time reading the word. I need to spend more time praying. I need to spend more time understanding the scriptures, asking God for revelations. Uh, I need to be able to minister to the right people, how to go about outreaches and program. There's so many things involved in the church, right? How do I evangelize? What are the uh, sectors, different places that I can evangelize? How do I reach out to the youth, uh, the, the college students, the families? And there's so many things. Now, I can't say, hey, no, I, I am used to only these 10 people. You know, for five years, I led a small group. So I, I, I'm more comfortable with that. You know? and, and more is given to you. Oh, we have to deliver, right? And we have to see that, you know, okay, God, you're giving me more. Uh, how much more I should, you know, give back and how much more I should deliver. So it's not only about, you know, wanting it, wanting bigger positions, higher roles, but it's also 
being able to learn, to prepare, to develop in our skills, abilities. And uh, I remember this uh, for in 2012, 2012 uh, I auditioned for the worship team at church. And, uh, and so I used to go to the locations, right? so which, which are smaller churches. Um, we have different locations. Uh, and so I prepare myself and I'll go. And all of a sudden, an opportunity started coming to lead the worship at the main church. Now, this main church is a big, big church, and they've got the recording happening and uh, you know, the live streams to all across the world. So I knew that I need to develop myself, right? It's no more leading in, uh, uh, in front of 20, 30 people, but uh, uh, a lot of people now. It's not like I'm not uh, giving my best for the 20, 30 people. Yes, I want to, but I realized that. Uh, when bigger opportunities come our way, the more we must be prepared, the more we must develop, and we must be able to deliver more than what we expected of us. Right? And the same, the same thing goes with the workplace and in the ministry. Right? Whatever it is, uh, we are to, when more is given to us, to give back, we need to deliver it. Uh, on time, deliver in the right way, right? Now, just because it's ministry, one of the things that uh, uh, is what we see around us, we we'll take it for granted. We say, okay, this is ministry, no, it's okay, grace and favor and God's blessing is there. Uh, we must not think of it that way. The, actually, it should be the other way around. When, you know, when we have our volunteer meetings and I keep telling our volunteers, right, we keep retraining us. Uh, the, even though we are a church, you know, uh, the more we give, we give in the sense the more we volunteer, the more we, responsibilities that come, uh, we must deliver in excellence. More than what we do in our regular, uh, you know, in the workplace as well. Meaning, because you're doing it for God. And it should be much more, right? And and so it's very important uh, to teach our children, teach our people, uh, our church, uh, our team members. If you're in the workplace, teach them that uh, you know the, the responsibilities are higher. Right? The stakes get higher the higher up you go. Sometimes we go higher. The decisions that we make uh, can impact many people. Right? So we're growing, we're growing, we're growing. Um, the decisions we make, the stakes get higher and we go up higher. More is expected of you. And sometimes we look at a position and we say, wow, I wish I could you know, get this position. I wish I could be an assistant manager or I wish I could be a CEO. It's wonderful, but the CEO will have sleepless nights many times because the stakes are so high. Any decision he makes, he will need to think 10 times, should I make this or no? Should I do this or no? Because it's going to affect the entire company. But the same way in ministry, as a leader, or maybe if you're in a pastoral role, any decision you make, you need to remember that it's going to affect the entire church. And secondly, also our lifestyle, the way we live is going to affect uh, the entire church. Uh, I remember this reading this. We produce our own kinds. Right? As a leader, if we are leaders who are gossiping, always angry, uh, always murmuring, always you know saying, or oh, grumbling, what will happen? The people in our church will have the same kind of attitude. And then suddenly you'll see a lot of gossip and anger. People fighting amongst each other, division, hatred, all that will be there because we produce our own kind. Right? What if we are people who are loving, we know how to care for people, we are teachable, we, uh, you know, we recognize our mistakes and we are open to correction? We will see a church that way. Uh, and so remember, the stakes get higher the higher up you go. Be patient. As you transition through employment, now uh, we we'll don't read that verse, but what we what I want to say is, in, at season sometimes you know people may lose their jobs, or sometimes people may quit 
uh, because they just want to take a break for some time. So that is all right. But if for people who have lost their jobs and you know, they're looking out uh, for a new job and this whole transition period can be very stressful or it could be, you know, uh, you know very, you'd be very eager to know what is happening. And sometimes we may not get an answer. God may not speak directly to us. Uh, but remember one thing, be patient and trust in the Lord. Because the Lord is the one who opens the doors. The Lord is the one who will uh, bring the right door in place. Now, the mistake we make is during these times of unemployment and waiting, uh, it does not mean we just sit around and do nothing. Right? We can always develop our skills. We can always develop in the talents and gifts that God has given us. Right? And we wait around and we wait in expectancy, knowing that in God, at the right time, you will open the right door. So waiting is not an idle time. Always remember, you know, sometimes we say, right, you now Apostle Paul waited for 17 years, or David waited for 17 years, but they were not idle. They were not sitting and doing nothing, but they were, they were, they were preparing themselves, right? Uh, uh, Joseph, he was preparing himself. David was preparing himself. He was, even though he was running away and from Saul, but he was preparing himself. God was preparing him. So the waiting time uh, or the transition time could be, uh, you know, a time of, you know, difficulty or you may say, God, help me through the season. But trust in the Lord. Uh, know that God is working on your behalf. And, and, and during that waiting time, uh, just continue to develop yourself. Continue to grow in whatever God has called you for. Right? Uh, look ahead as you step into a new job. Uh, so if there are new opportunities that come your way, look ahead with expectancy. Be joyful. Right? Uh, I remember I was in Bangalore and this opportunity came and I was so excited. I said, God, thank you for the opportunity. I really want to do well. Uh, I want to build a strong church here in Bangalore. Give me strategies, give me plans, or give me ideas, give me uh, you know, wisdom to handle because I, I've never been in a pastoral role and I need your wisdom. Now all of a sudden, you know, I remember I came, we came to church and uh, you know, with no pastoral experience. But, uh, of course, I was in member care, so there were times we were helping and mentoring people and teaching them as well. Uh, but I remember all of a sudden, we had these elderly couples who are you know, well advanced in their age. They would come and pour out their hearts to us. They'd say, these are the problems we're going through. These are the you know, challenges we went through. You know, we would sit and listen to them and we think, oh God, give me the wisdom. This, what do I say to them? How do I encourage them? And you have youth who come up with all kinds of things. Right? One youth came up to me and say, said, Pastor, uh, I, I remember I was speaking to this youth and I said, I'll see you next Sunday. He said, no, Pastor, I doubt you will see me. I said, what happened? He said, I think this week I'm going to commit suicide. Directly, openly. He just told me that. Uh, and I was just maybe two weeks in the pastor on road. I said to myself, oh, God, help me. What do I say to this boy? And he looked serious about it. He was there, there was a smile on his face. Um, and he looked serious. Help me, how do I deal with this problem. So, you know, uh, uh, even through all of that, when we look at new opportunities, we can always look with expectancy. God, teach me. Be teachable. Learn. Grow. develop, uh, But be excited about what God is giving you. Right? If God is giving you in the workplace, if God is giving you a promotion, don't say, oh God, Promotion, now the work is going to be more, the money is good, but the work, I'll have to work double the hours, I'll have to stay back to. Now we wanted the promotion. After getting the promotion, if we grumble, that's not right in the eyes of God, right? Uh, same thing in ministry. If you say, God, one day I want to be a pastor, one day I want to, you know, travel the world preaching the gospel. And then when we, if God gives us the opportunity, we say, oh, I'm traveling, God. Uh, 10 hours flight and then uh, 
20 hours on the train. Uh, I said, okay, if I can just do the ministry here, home, pastoral care, you know, so many people have to sit and listen to everyone's troubles and challenges, and then I get stressed out. If we are crumbling about it, then there's no blessings. And look ahead with what God has for you, with expectancy, with joy, uh, you know, even though it may be a huge task ahead of you, right? Uh, like what Joshua said, I'm going to go and take my mountain. Joshua and Caleb were very keen. They were old, well and advanced in their years. Right? Now, Joshua and Caleb didn't say, oh, how are we going to go to this place? How are we going to defeat them? Uh, I wish God can send his angels and do it. Caleb said, I feel like I am as young as when I was 40 years old, so I am ready to go. They were so expected. Like Joshua and Caleb said, let's go. That is our land. That's what God has promised. I'm ready. I may be 18, but I'm not old. I feel young. God has given me the strength. And you see that expectancy. It's so beautiful to read that passage. And they went in and occupied the territory. Right? And so look ahead for new joy, for the new tasks God has put ahead. Look ahead with expectancy. This is the last point. Uh, even as be courageous as you move from employment to entrepreneurship. Now, uh, there will be times when you know you've been working with a company uh, and you know you've been working for probably 10, 12 years, and then all of a sudden you feel led in your heart to start your own business or to start your own company. Uh, be encouraged in that. Right? Stay strong during that time. You know, yes, you need to plan, you need to prepare. Right? You need to say, okay, I need to see financially, am I able to prepare for my to start off the business? Am I able to look after my family? Have I saved enough for their education, for the children's education? So you look at all those practical aspects. But even as we transition, uh, be ready to take it up. You know, be ready to uh, trust in the Lord. You know, sometimes it's not easy when you think of it. You say, okay, but you know, now I may not get my monthly income. Uh, so how am I going to deal with this? Be courageous at those times. Say, God, I know that if you have called me, you will make a way for me. So um, from employment to entrepreneurship, if, if you look at it in a, in a ministry-related way, uh, be people who have been serving in the ministry for many years, and suddenly God tells you, you know, go and start this church, or you go and start your own ministry. Uh, so prepare and be courageous and trust God to go and start. He will make ways. He will provide. Uh, and remember that in career growth, ministry growth, uh, both of it, both of them, uh, trust in God. And it's wonderful. God wants us to grow. Never be satisfied in the place that we are in. Develop yourselves. Amen. Amen. Let's just close in prayer. Uh, could one of us please close in prayer? Uh, maybe say... Any one of us, please close in prayer. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we bless you, we glorify you. We thank you, Lord, for your son, who you have used to instruct us in your word, in building capacity, Lord, in being the best that God has called us to be, Lord, in living out excellence in all that we do. We pray, O oh Lord, that these words that we've heard, O oh Lord, these words that we've been taught, we pray that, Lord, you will give us the grace, Lord, to become them and to do them all to your glory. We, Lord, we come in the rest of the classes we'll be having. We pray for wisdom. We pray for understanding for all that will be taught. Thanks be to your holy name. Lord, I pray, Lord, that your son, Lord, who you've used to water us, strengthen him and continue to use him for great, great, great works ahead. Thank you, everlasting Father, for in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Uh, sorry, we don't have time for questions. Maybe we can look at it tomorrow. Uh, have a great day ahead. Uh, we'll catch up tomorrow as well. God bless. Thank you, Pastor.